Hey girls, hey you guys, I'm back. And as I said in the end of the last video, I was assuming that it was going to work and I was right, it's working. Like the last deploy was successful and you can see the container is running. You can see that we have one connection because I have this tab open here and that's it. We have an app that's deployed and then when you do change, you just run the same command over and over again. That's this command here. And you can see I just did it and it's working. Okay, great. Then let's start to create some features, right? Then in this video, I would like to show something useful here. Then let's start it. Uh, I believe you should start with the app homepage. Then let's see. Then I have this, this homepage here and we call group uh, content topics. Quite, it's like group topics content, right? Uh, I don't have to, I don't want to have a UI to manage this content or like something like that. We don't need this right now. I can just add new content in the database, but it would be nice to list this content for the user. Then I will start pretty simple. I will, I will go here. Uh, and I will start to, to get this data from my server. And a very easy way to do this with Meteor is to publish this data to the client. Then we can go and you can publish the data using two methods. You can use subscription or methods. I'm going to start with methods and I'm going to start to organize a little bit better what we have here. Then I'm going to create a folder like for a group. For, yeah, group is the first level, right? Then for groups, I'm going to have a folder for it. And I don't care about this API folder. I want to move. Oh, wait. Okay, I'm already in the right level. Then I'm going to move this to here. Then I'm going to organize by feature. And inside each feature, I'm going to have a data folder that is like my server side. And I'm going to have my UI folder that's like my client side. Of course, Meteor is great because you can write the code and run in both sides. But I like to have this separation because in general, uh, most of the code will be in one side or in the other side, at least the way that I do it. Then I'm going to call these a groups and I can organize this later. Then I'm just going to display my groups here. And like, I usually don't do like this because I usually like to use the ID. Then I first, export what I want from here and then OK. And then from the other place, I just import automatically. Like I'm using option enter here and it's working. OK, then I have my groups and uh, then I need to get the data. And I have a utility that I'm using like in my projects. Maybe it should be a package, but I don't think it's a package yet. I can just copy paste for now. Like I have a method call here. This is a very, very simple file where I just wrap a method call. Method is a, is a one of the ways that I mentioned about Meteor. Then I'm just going to create another folder here called infra, like my infrastructure that is not related to my app, but there are some files and utilities that I want to have. Ideally, we should have this folder as small as possible because we'd like to have packages and to Use, reuse the code in a better way because this code is not related to my app. But for now, let's go with this, this idea. Then I can call a method and then I basically can reject or resolve. Then I can just use a promise uh, here. Then it's a little bit better to handle this data in this way. And we can like you with react, now we have use effect, for example. And I think it's the first time that I use methods with react like this. And let me put use effect here and then I can do a method call to get my groups, right? Then I can get like groups. If you're familiar with GraphQL, I use GraphQL in many projects and it would be like a, a query that I'm doing, but just using mature methods. And then I'm going to, to have my result here or an error here. If I have an error, I can al I also have like a error handler that usually I I just have a single way 
to handle all the kind of errors that I could have. But for now, I will go simple. I will just add a package to have logs. Then I'm going to meter add quav logs. Then with this package, I can just put some logs here and that will be enough for now. Import quav uh, log. So I have, I have the logger for the client and I'm just going to log this. Uh, message will be the message will be error getting groups and then I can just paste the the error there okay and the the end is that I need to get my data then I, I also going to get my data back that is probably my groups and then I can for now just console my group and put in the logs I have a shortcut for that that's called live template on WebStorm then I can just copy this I'm going to copy this and I'm going to just use it my like it's something that I have recorded already here on my settings oh I don't know why it's not working let me see okay I don't know why it was not recognizing this part as a instruction and because of that it was not working there but I can just put CL all and I have this it's copy and paste here and here and these are called live templates. I will have a, a video just about this, but like you can create your own live templates and all these things you can see here that I have a few. And then it's copy data from your clipboard. You can see here that you can get the data from your clipboard. It's pretty useful to do things that you do many times. Okay, but I don't have this method yet. Then I need to create my method. Then I mean, I'm going to create this like group uh, groups or group methods. It's the first time that I created this way using methods and React hooks. Then I'm just deciding exactly what I want here. But I, I can have like my meter methods like this. And then my meter method will be my groups. And I can just return in my groups collection dot find. I don't want a cursor. I want the array Then I'm going to get using fetch and I also want to import meter all the time because I don't want to have warnings that meter is not imported and one last piece here that's really important is that in the server side we need to uh, call this file otherwise it's not going to be initialized we could put it here or you could have another file that you import from there for now I'm going simple I'm going to import here then I need to import this groups method file then I can just use the the relative import here groups and data and groups method. As I said in the f one of the first videos, I always prefer to have unique names, and that's why I have group methods. I know it's inside the group folder, but it's faster for me because you are going to see that we are going to have a lot of groups like this, and then will be a lot of methods, and it'll be easier for me to open pretty fast. Okay, and that's it. Then I have a method. I am importing my method here. And let's see what else I should do. Okay, this is a use effect. I don't want to refresh this if some props change. Maybe in the future you can have a filter. And then if the filter change, you want to call again. But for now, that's enough. And I want to also have my state. Then I'm going to have my groups, set groups. And I have this on my state. Maybe I don't need state for this. I'm not sure yet, but let's start with state. And by default, it will be an empty array. Okay. Uh, then this is going to be my groups. And then I'm going to call this data to avoid conflicts. I don't want to rename this. And then I'm just going to set my groups here. And last but not least, I'm going to have a fragment here. And or maybe I can have a UI for now, UL for now. And I put some allies inside and we can just have like uh, groups and you can have a map and then you can have a group. If you're not familiar with React and what I'm doing here, we are going to have videos specific about it. But the idea here is to iterate this list of groups and to create uh, the HTML. It's probably okay because I'm using JSX. This is not required anymore in the new React that's coming. 
but for now you need to have React imported in the top when you have a JSX style here. But in React 17, that would not be required anymore, but we are not quite there yet. And I, I have ID, then I can have this unique ID. Always when you create a list, React is going to ask for a specific key, then React knows which node to update in case of updates. This case, we are not going to have updates, but it's good to have anyway. And also, if I don't have my groups yet, maybe this should be new, so we know that we don't have this group yet, because here, as, it, as this is the return of fetch, we are all, always going to have something, uh, like even a, an empty array, then maybe the, the best idea here is like, if I don't have groups, it's new, then I can return like uh, no group uh, loading because it's loading yet, right? And otherwise, if you have maybe a groups dot length that's zero, we can say no groups yet. Of course, this is going to be creating the database, then we are going to make sure that we always have groups but just in case here, and let's run this project again. Let me check my database, my local database first. Okay, Meteor is not running yet. I'm using for now the embed database that Meteors provide, but that's not the idea. Later I will create just my database. Oh, sorry, I installed Quav logs, but I did install the dependence of Quav logs. This is the package. Let me just me get the dependence because we have the uh, integration in this package with uh, Logly and it's complained that I didn't install the dependence. Then let's just meter yarn add this guy. We install Logly book. It's just a way to send our log to logs to Logly. Logly is, is a service that has a very nice search for logs. And we can also put other settings here, but I don't remember, but I don't think they are required. We also have some utilities that you can send the errors from the client to your server. Then if you, even if you don't want to use Logly, that can be very helpful. Then you can have your client errors in this server without like any, any issue. We just put a method in the server for you and you log everything that you send to this. Okay, let's see if this is working. Okay. This is the production one. Let me go to localhost 3000. Okay, I have a group group. I'm not sure, maybe this is right, maybe this is wrong. Then you need to connect to our database. And here we have two groups, makes sense. And both have the name groups. Let's add this to group two. Then you can make sure you are rendering the groups in the proper way. Yeah, we have group one, group two. Then we have this list. Then now we have this approach of calling a method and returning. Then we can improve over that. And in the next lesson, in the next video, it's not really a lesson because I'm not teaching you. <laughs> I'm just showing what I'm doing. Then I'm going to have these groups and you can start to play around with this idea of groups and content. And I can start to add some real data because I have here a long, long list of content that I'm going to, to publish videos and text about it. Then you can have like a lot of content here and we can just copy paste this and put in our database and see how this works. Okay, that was just the idea of this video to show you how to use Meteor methods. And maybe it's, it's a good idea to always try to comment before we wrap up the video using method to get the groups from the database. Let's see, because we have our S-Lint rules. I don't think the Husk is running and we can confirm that here. Yeah, it's not running. We should have Rusk running, but so far let's proceed. Later I will, and then you can review everything that we have. And that's it for now. Thank you. Bye.